Welcome everyone to How to Build Your Recruiter Brand with Matt Charney. <laughs> I guess everyone in the HR industry knows Matt, but for the purpose of this session, uh, Matt is the Chief Content Officer for one of the biggest recruiting and staffing organizations in the world, Allegi Solutions. Matt is also a partner at the award-winning independent news organization, Recruiting Daily, and a leading influencer in the recruiting space, recognized by publications like Forbes, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and Huffington Post. So, Please give a warm welcome to Matt. Hey. Mic check, mic check, one, two. All right, how's everybody doing today? Awesome. So um, my name is Matt Charney, like I said, and this is a How to Build an Employer Brand. Everyone in this room familiar with Jay-Z? Because if not, this is going to be a painful, painfully long session. And, I may, and uh, one of the things we're going to talk about is setting expectations. And my expectation is this is an hour-long presentation that I'm going to try to do in 20 minutes. So if you see me do, go over something really quickly, I'm apologizing in advance, OK? So there's me. And uh, I may curse. And I know that being HR professionals, that generally tends to uh, not sit so well. So apparently the FCC says I get a little bit more latitude if I put that up first. So like I said, this is a Jay-Z theme presentation. And this is why branding is important, because identity is a prison you can never escape, but the way to redeem your past is not to run from it, but to try to understand it and use it as a foundation to grow, which is a disclaimer to say I'm about to make fun of recruiters for a little while. Anyone ever, ever, anyone ever done the auto-suggest on Google? Hey, recruiters are. Those are the most searched for terms. So just so you guys know. Uh, and also, we have a hard time as recruiters as a profession. This is where our brand is at. So, I mean, what do we do? I don't even think that we have a good sense. Uh, are we in talent acquisition or staffing? Like, who knows? But, uh, you know, I think that uh, there are definitely quite a lot of perceptions out there. But here's where we're at in terms of a profession and being a brand. So, I got to say, I did a little search for uh, negative mentions uh, for recruiter on Twitter. And uh, nothing so good uh, on there. I pulled out some of my favorites. But uh, according to a poll that was done, 30% uh, of your candidates, uh, as opposed to dealing with you, would rather go on a blind, bad blind date. 22% would rather speak in front of 100 strangers. 19% say they'd rather spend the day at the DMV. And uh, literally the most painful thing in the world, people would prefer a root canal than to go through your recruiting process, right? Okay. So uh, again, this is, these are your friends out there who are, when you call and say, hey, I'm a recruiter, and you might not get the most you know, glowing of receptions, here's why. Uh, I don't know if anyone saw this, my very favorite email ever, the Hey Bay intern uh, email. This is uh, what happens when you try to talk millennial, which I think we'll be hearing about later. Um, but these are the people who are ruining your reputation, right? And so if the online recruiting process is happening before you even get a chance to talk to a candidate, this is what's happening when you pick up the phone for a recruiter, right? So uh, here's the other thing. How do you become a recruiter? I love this. Uh, there, there's really uh, <laughs> nothing that unifies it whatsoever. So it's like, oh, maybe uh, you can get a degree, but you don't really need one. Maybe you gain experience. So like, <laughs> there you go, folks. That's what Google says. Um, I did a you know, state of California check. So to become a real estate agent, this is what I have to do. Okay, it's a lot of stuff. That's like a lot of stuff, and it's very hard to do. Just to become a real estate agent and sell a house. To cut hair, I have to do a minimum of 1,200 hours worth of training, and I have to do a six-month board-certified program. Like, that's to cut hair, and I have to get recertified annually. What do you have to do to hire people for a company? Ain't nothing. No additional requirements whatsoever. So when we look at recruiters, here's kind of the state of recruiting right now. Where do recruiters come from? The answer is liberal arts degrees, I think. But um, <laughs> this is a poll that uh, Echo Gravity wrote. And uh, I think we're all in the same. I accidentally stepped into it. So we're in a profession where we all have some sort of passion about it. But at the same time, guess what? We just kind of fall, fall into this, right? And so I went and looked at some recruiting display ads, people looking for recruiters. There you have it, folks. You, too, can become a top recruiter in your spare time. Right, so this is the perception that's out there right now. Um, again, background, no uniformity. Uh, before becoming a recruiter, no uniformity. So we really don't have a lot of professional codification. 
I guess my point. And we would normally only stay in recruiting, an average recruiter, for two years, which is funny because we would knock ourselves out uh, for job hopping, I think. Um, but <laughs> that's a much shorter tenure than the average uh, for any other industry. Uh, again, ironic. Um, and then finally, I think we need to look at it as this. Again, I know I'm going very fast. Is recruiting a job or a career? Does anyone here have an answer to that? Is it a means or is it an end? Because I don't know the answer to that. So, uh, but look at this. 60% say this is what they want to do with the rest of their lives. Show of hands, who here wants to stay in recruiting for, for the rest of their career? It's actually not a very high percentage in this room. Good. So we'll talk about how, uh, as Jay would say, we'll, we'll go on to the next one. Um, and so moving on to how to build your recruiter brand. So the question that I get asked the most is, okay, how do I get to be like famous, uh, it, like HR famous? Or how do I become like a social media or online influencer? And I'm like, why do you want to do that? Um, so here's, I guess, kind of the supposition of this. A uh, couple things. You can build your own brand pretty easily, and I would suggest you need to. The influence that matters doesn't happen in any way, shape, or form, um, I would say, outside. Like, who cares what cl your clout score is? Who cares how many followers you have on Twitter? The influence th and you need to be able to exert, and this is what we're going to talk about, is on your candidates, and it's on your hiring managers, and it's on your business. So all that said, you have to go ahead and not be Hey Bay intern. You have to create a distinct brand, and you can't be uh, like every recruiter. You have to be yourself. So I guess a couple of suppositions before I go in. Occam's razor is how I kind of approach everything, which is to say that as much as I'd like to say AI is the answer, um, I think that the simplest analysis is, is usually the correct one. So this is going to be very straightforward. Um, so Occam's razor for a recruiter brand. There are basically three questions when you're building your brand that you have to answer. Will this ma help me make better hires faster? At the end of the day, that is your job, and I love that we overcomplexify it. Recruiters are in sales, recruiters are marketers, all this. No, we are in the business of hiring at the end of the day. Our job is to make a hire for our recs that are open, right? And if you're not doing that, you're kind of wasting your time. Here's one we miss, is this in the best interests of my company? I think we lose sight of that a lot, but if you're not aligned with the business, then the business probably don't need you. And third, does data support my decision? We can talk about predictive analytics, algorithms, big data all day. But at the end of the day, if you can't justify to anyone who asks the impact that you're making, I mean, whatever those metrics may be, then you're in trouble. So let's start off with uh, some things that I believe to be true. Recruiters cannot fix a broken culture. As much as we'd like to, uh, that's not going to happen. So. Candidates, obviously, are hearing about our companies. Uh, we can't change the perception of our company, right? Uh, recruiters don't control who gets paid what, uh, as we all know from those offers that we get. And then comps like, oh, no, compression. And then you have to start over again, right? So as much as we like to talk about culture fit and all that, uh, as, as the Wu-Tang Clan once said, cash rules everything around me. Cream, grab the money, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. So uh, if, if actually... <laughs> We look at this, you know why people are turning down offers? It's because compensation is not high enough, and until you can control comp, uh, guess what? There's only a certain degree of influence there. Um, we talk a lot about candidate experience, which certainly you can do. Oh, I'm right on time. Uh, so you can't influence bad tech decisions, right? So if you're like, where are all my candidates? And you're saying, let's use Taleo, uh, you know, th there's probably the answer. That's got nothing to do with you, okay? Uh, and you can't influence bad hiring decisions either. So, um, which is to say, anyone know approximately what percentage of recruiting hires for exempt positions fail in year one? 26.4%. So as a hand, one out of every four hires that we put our process to fails miserably in the first year. Guess what? I don't think that's our fault. Hiring manager's fault. So all that said, I hope we set the stage that recruiting is not a great reputation, a nebulous place in the business, not a good background. If you work for a crappy company uh, with a bad brand, or you are like, how can I influence anything internally? The only thing that you have is your own reputation. 
And that follows you everywhere. And that's the one thing I want to impart is, is in particular as we get into employer branding, and we all know people like this who've been an employer brand person at like five different companies now, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, I'm with this company, it's the greatest place ever, come work here. And it's like, wait, you were just across the street at the competitor last week, like what, the, what happened? So just know that when we switch jobs every two years, like companies are gonna go, companies are gonna change, hiring managers are gonna go. The one thing that's always gonna follow you is you. I haven't recruited for almost 10 years. Uh, I w was a full cycle recruiter at Walt Disney and Warner Brothers. I still have candidates who contact me after all this time, and I still have hiring managers who contact me after all this time. And the reason why is because I basically to them and the person you go to when a job's about to open or you need career advice, which sucks, as everyone here knows, but it is what it is. So I'm, uh, let's talk about how you actually influence, okay? And I'm stealing this all from a guy named Robert Cialdini, wrote a book called Influence. He was a social psychologist. But I think that all of his lessons are, are pretty good for recruiting. So let's start off with reciprocity. Uh, like that quote. Okay, so reciprocity is this. We always are like, in a job description, here's how awesome our company is, here's what we need, and here's how you can help us. But there's very little value exchange in that. So as Kennedy might have said, uh, ask not uh, you know, what you can do, uh, ask not what the candidate can do for you, ask what you can do for the candidate, right? So networking works both ways. Again, don't be a gatekeeper, open doors. Uh, and then my miscounted words here at the bottom as it turns out, big data at work, should have caught that. Uh, the, <laughs> the one thing that I think that we miss is how can I help? Right, like we're very focused as a general sense tactically. The answer is probably not going to be very significant, or you can't. Um, but those words will get you further everywhere in terms of building influence because you're offering value. Whether or not they take it, that's cool. But you're actually having reciprocity work against you if at the same time you say, that's not my job, which is, I think, both HR and recruiting's favorite thing to say. Um, so with that, number two, commitment and consistency. Okay. This is pretty simple. You know what I think the three best tools in recruiting are right now? Like the, the three best on the market? So telephone, or Rolodex, or LinkedIn, uh, which is essentially placed it, and, uh, and a handshake, okay? So high touch wins over high tech. You might not be an employer of choice, but you can be a recruiter of choice no matter where you recruit. Always, always personalize when possible because you know everyone else is praying and praying out there. Um, that used to be what we'd say when we post a job and just hope for applications to come in. Now it's let me send out a thousand different uh, communications, all of the same and with no targeting whatsoever. At the end of the day, again, you have to make one hire. So all that matters is converting that one person. I would advocate the best way to do that is to make sure that you have a relationship with them. Also, it helps you collect, you know, shut offers down, get those things closed for the one reason that if you have a relationship built with a candidate, uh, rule here, they are going to have a difficult time saying no if you've already offered value, if you've been clear through the process, and uh, they already know somebody who works there. That's one of the biggest principal drivers, and you're probably the first person they know at the company, unless they come in through a referral. So um, if you're gonna, again, do some, uh, say something, do it. Start small, work up, do this with your hiring managers, but if you over-promise and under-deliver, then you might as well go work for a third-party staffing firm. Um, and so, <laughs> Right? Final one is uh, social proof. So social proof is simply this. Um, we want to go out there and validate that we're really good at what we do, right? That's why like LinkedIn skills endorsements, which is like whack-a-mole, exists, right? So uh, the one thing I say is you, is you put yourself out there, which people are increasingly doing. Um, just remember social media is not a strategy, it's a tool. Uh, the message is the message. Uh, the medium doesn't matter, in, in fact. Um, no one can replace you. You can always be yourself, right? So again, be, your, be yourself. I don't know why it is that the thing that I hear recruiters say to me the most is you say what I wish I could. And I don't get that, just say it. It's the worst that can happen. 
get fired. I would I would argue that do a good jo job with this. Who cares? Because uh, you're the only one of you on the market. That's called scarcity. Uh, be chill. Don't overshare. You don't have the greatest company in the world. No one cares about every job that's open. Again, add value to get value. And game recognize game. Referrals, referrals, referrals. Right? So the more people you know in the organization, the more people you can build relationships with, um, that's social proof. Because you're going to basically build an, an inbound funnel with your own network as opposed to using a CRM or something like that. Okay? Final authority. We think that we are subject matter, matter experts in everything. 83% of recruiters think they have a good understanding of the business and their recs, according to a poll that was just done. And so that's 83% of recruiters. Hiring managers, only 22% say that their recruiters think that they have a good understanding of the job or the business. So uh, how do you build authority? You amplify the voices, obviously, of the people who uh, who do have authorities. So your employees are more trusted than you are. Put them to work, but make sure that you understand what your ask is, what your expectations are. The one thing I can tell you is this. Subject matter experts are trusted. I'm not going to go through Pew data. I don't have time, and I'm already getting the hook. Um, but you are a subject matter expert in the one thing that everyone, everyone in a company cares about, and that is careers. How do I advance my career in this company? What's the best way to format a resume? How do I interview successfully? All the questions that are normally done on the internet, uh, you are the SME there. So get yourself out there as a subject matter expert internally. Think of yourself not as a recruiter, but as a career concierge, which is a fun expression that I use. White glove treatment all the way. Um, your hiring managers drive satisfaction, and they are the ones who are going to give you uh, that authority internally. Uh, and then the final thing that I think recruiters skip out on a lot Never be afraid to say the following statement. I don't know. Okay? Oh, you, don't, you might not have the answer to anything. If you can get them the answer, do so. But I think we get in this selling mode, and that is exactly how you erode authority, is by trying to make stump it up. Finally, scarcity. So here's scarcity for recruiters. I'm going to go real quick now. i got two minutes. Uh, unemployment is down. So are job tenures, which means that skilled candidates are still hard to find, and they have choices. Guess what? They're driving the market. You aren't. So uh, know that a good recruiter, though, is still hard to find. You will never be replaced by robots. Um, focus on the work that can't be automated. Uh, uh, essentially, you are not in benefits administration or payroll, so you're all sitting pretty. Um, ATS uh, you know, stands for automate that shit. And uh, so that is to say high touch again, but know that uh, when you have a market where supply and demand is favoring the candidate, they're going to make a decision based on the company they offer, but also largely the relationship with the recruiter. Okay, that's just true. And finally, likability. And this is kind of like the premise of employer branding. It's also the premise behind, uh, you know, uh, unconscious bias, but that's another story altogether. Um, here are just my four takeaways. Okay, know the business, know the data, know the people and know yourself. You can do those four things, guess what? That is exactly how you not only build a recruiter brand as somebody who's not Hey Bay intern, but you also uh, you know, can, can influence a lot. So uh, you know those four things are good. Uh, keeping with my JC theme really quick. While we are uh, not the most highly thought of profession, in fact, we are worse than PR when it comes to uh, credibility. Um, out there, it's never too late to reinvent your brand. So if you're thinking, well, shoot, uh, I can't do this, it's too late. Uh, one thing I want to point out, Jay-Z, 1998, was acquitted uh, on first-degree murder charges, and then he was recharged with racketeering and conspiracy by the federal government. Okay? It's 1998. Fast forward 10 years. He's hanging out with the president. Right? Federal charges are dropped. Uh, and uh, I think that quote really says it all. And, and so when we talk about like brand, it's really hard to measure, but I'm going to show you the business value of a brand right here. $450 million just by Hova being Hova. So um, I think that uh, at the end of the day, if you're wondering where the business value is and how you measure impact, guess what? Uh, you're probably not going to make $450 million, but you can certainly uh, make more effective relationships within your organization and better connections with candidates and hopefully uh, be building that career in recruiting. So with that, uh, what more can I say? Fade to black. 
enjoy your millennials.